We look at the needs of young children, two to five year olds, and when we compare the services or the teaching that we're getting in the nurseries around Hansworth at the time, they were not being trained to um, have an understanding of themselves. We were talking about identity, and it is important that you give children a basic understanding of their culture, because research has shown that black children if you have black dolls and white dolls and you tell 100 black children to pick, go and choose some dolls, 98% would pick up the white dolls. So we understand then that it was an identity crisis. We believe then that to catch them at an early age would be the most important thing. Now, I'll give you this paper and then I'll tell you what we are going to do. Eight years from then, we look at it from an educational point of view because we have had experience of black basic schools in Jamaica, and the same age group was, were being taught to read, to write. And we said, this is a good idea. And we managed to get Mrs. Hill. I thought the best thing was to introduce this program where you can get children to understand what education really is. Because without doing that, when they get into mainstream schools, they, they can have negative attitudes towards education. But of course, they need to have positive attitude in order that they work and work successfully in the school. You know, in the Caribbean and particularly in Jamaica, we believe strongly in education. You know, if we, the children are not educated in a certain way, we know that at the end of the day, they won't get a job. Look at your papers. What do you have in front of you? Yeah. Uh -huh. and, uh, and a brush. All right. Yes, yeah, a toothbrush. Now, we are going to use the, the match sticks to measure how many match sticks we are going to measure each of these four objects. We start with the, the two lines. You see the two lines there? Which one is longer? Well, I've been associated with the nursery for over four years because um, my first son was here, my second son was here, and my third son is here now. So I would say that um, I'm quite pleased with the nursery because they do what I want them to, I expect the children to do. I mean, getting the, the basic groundwork for them to go to the mainstream school, and that is very, very important. What about um, the fact that they have such a lot of educational work to do? Surely they're too young for that. Well, I did consider this, and I had, I had, I have been worried, but uh, fortunately, my daughter was, was what, three and a half, four and a half when she came here, so she was ready to sit down and do that kind of work. But I think, so long as it's evenly balanced, um, it's to my daughter's advantage. She's um, a black, a black child, and when she goes to mainstream education, she will be disadvantaged anyway by that mere fact. So I think the earlier it starts, I'm more for it. How many matchsticks? We have down here. And these? <laughs> Two. Very good. And here, how many? Very good. So, which is longer? This one. That's good. How many matchsticks? Before we these? take the child into the nursery, we have a parents' day. The parents are told what we have to offer. They have a chance there to say, okay, you know, whether to either agree or disagree. Then from there we have several other meetings where they can voice their opinion. No, don't! No, he's swimming! No, I have to put his ear. In other society and culture, we like Haitians and Jews and so forth, and even English, parents play a prominent role in the education of their children. Black parents coming from the Caribbean, where teaching of children is left to the teachers. You know, teachers out there, they are social workers, they are parents, they are teachers, you know? We came over with the same idea that, you know, teachers will take the, the all interest in, our, in the education of our children. And we are trying to get parents to be interested in their children in uh, education. Last year we had the first prize giving, and 
where we, you know, we gave prizes for, for best reader, etc. And all the parents, I had one of the support from the parents because they were, you know, all for it. What happens during the year, though, is that the staff work in close collaboration with the parents. That is, they set homework and the, the, the homework is sent home to the parent. The parent has to work with the child and report back. Then we have, let's say, in, in May, we have like parents week, two weeks set aside for the parents to come in. We observe the, the, the children closely again, and we have written reports sent home to the parents, and they you know, will come and discuss the reports. Oh, oh bless you! Have some money. They've got a set of rules and an ethos which they demand that the parents live up to. And if the parents don't live up to it, they uh, are reminded about the ethos of the school and the rules and the discipline. And if they don't meet those expectations, then the children can be asked to leave. And the children who are asked to leave, by and large, don't do terribly well when they arrive in mainstream education either. It takes them a long time to settle because they've not, in many cases, had the parental backing that's required for successful entry into education. All of the teachers notice that the children from Marcus Garvey are extremely confident, very highly motivated, and are very well prepared to come into school, to settle down, and to work straight away. And it's not just a case of being uh, socially ready, they're educationally ready as well. Show How many have you got to put in here? Five. Five. No, look at it carefully. Four, good girl, okay. They are clued into uh, an Afro Caribbean culture down there, but it's, the, I think, the biggest part of the ethos is self esteem. That the children have got a very high level of self esteem, that they see themselves as being very successful and we have absolutely no problems uh, adapting that sort of level of commitment and motivation to our schemes here. I find that when they've been, that my other children, when they've been to mainstream nurseries, city day nurseries, that they haven't had any positive images of their own culture. I find that it's not talked about and it's not depicted in any way. And I just think that this is a disadvantage to a small child in her important formative years. I wasn't taught black culture, so I'm very pleased to know that now a second generation in my line has got the privilege of being taught both black culture and to live with the society that she's in now. Do you, I was going to say, do you think that's important? I mean, has, has being educated here hampered you in any way? It's had its disadvantages. Yes. Was it because you didn't have that what sense of pride that this nursery says it's trying to? Instill? It's because I didn't really know who I was. My formative years in Jamaica, then we were British, then we were taught British. Black history was never taught. And I came here and black history was never taught, at least not in my era. So it is nice to know that the second, third generation of blacks, whether they're born here or in, or in the West Indies, have been given the opportunity from an early age to identify themselves and also to identify the society that they're living in. Who can tell us something about any of the people, any of the faces in the book? Kemiwa, what can you tell me about a Chinese person? Good boy, a Chinese person has got straight hair. What else, Kemiwa? What kind of eyes did we say a Chinese person have got? Oh, yes, the eyes do go, but what did we say? We said they had a special name. Who can remember the name for a Chinese person's eyes? They are beginning with S. Say it, Lorraine, nice and loud, Lorraine. Slanty. Slanty, good girl. Talija, what can you tell me about a black person? You don't know? I know. Manzini, you know. What kind, what kind of hair has a black person got, Manzini? I know it's, what colour it is, Manzini. It's black, but is it straight or is it curly? Curly. It's curly. We try our very best to get um, black children doing positive things. The books we choose. Yes, we may have story books, you know, with um, white children, you know, on, on the cover. But then we use drama, to, 
we dramatize the stories. So instead of using like um, Ansel and Gretel, let's say for example, Ansel and Gretel, we use the names of um, Tobias and, and another, and Sharina, another name, black children's name, and we, we, we do it like that in drama. Really. I think that you've got to have uh a curriculum within the school which is relevant to all of the kids that you've got within the school. I think the days in Birmingham now of having a, a white middle class orientated curriculum are rapidly disappearing. The way that we uh, view our education is that we start from where the children are, the experiences that they've got, and build on those experiences. And uh, your curriculum, your books, your resources should reflect the population that you've got within your school. We have a staff development program. The staff visit schools just to look at the curriculum that the schools offer. We have workshops and seminars here. We invite mainstream school teachers to come and, and, and talk with the staff. For example, in reading, teaching of reading, myself as a reading teacher, and we have maths, you know, maths person and a science person will come in and talk, you know, like an educational psychologist, you know, would come in and also, you know, talk with the, with the staff. I don't believe in working in isolation. Of course, this is a volunteer organization in the true sense, and it's a black organization, yes. But at the end of the day, the children are going to live in Britain, okay? They're going to be living here, so we must link with, with those people, you know, who are in the mainstream education. The Marcus Garvey project really does show the way forward for many of the children. I think the ethos at Marcus Garvey helps to create it. I think that it is a very tight, disciplined structure and a lot is required of the children. They're required to perform uh, from a, a very early age at quite a high level. And I, I think with that sort of an approach, then the days of underachieving for black kids could be part of the past. Make some shoes Vera Gilbert reporting from the Marcus Garvey Nursery School. That's all we have time for this week, but please join me again next Sunday at 1.30 for another edition of Here and Now. Till then, take care of yourselves and have a good week. Goodbye.